After my last video, it became clear to me that many are having a problem with the concept of counter space. Since counter space cannot be directly observed, then why bother with it, right? This is the most common concern. Also, some were concerned that I was teaching something different than what Ken Wheeler is teaching. Well, this is not exactly true. What I'm doing is I'm teaching it differently. What would be the point of teaching it the same way that Ken does? If I taught it exactly the way he does, then you will be just as confused as you are now. And from the comments I've received in the first video, it does seem that there is still some confusion. So I'm going to teach it differently, and I'm hoping that my approach will add clarity to Ken's teachings. Of course, if I do say something that isn't in tune with what Ken is trying to say, then I'm sure he will tell me. So I'm going to continue with my approach in an effort to help you understand Ken Wheeler's missing secrets of magnetism. Ken defines a magnet as point nonspecific incommensurate conjugate magnetodielectric coherent system. Wow, that is a mouthful. I'm going to say it again. Ken defines a magnet as point nonspecific incommensurate conjugate magnetodielectric coherent system. In my previous video, we talked about the principle of incommensurability and what that means. Put simply, two domains are incommensurate if both domains have nothing in common. What one is, the other one isn't. For example, zero is not one and one is not zero. The domain of zero is nothing like the domain in one, of one and vice versa. The domain of counter space is nothing like the domain of space and vice versa. Today we're going to talk about the conjugate relationship that exists between various domains of incommensurability. Ken describes the magnet as an incommensurate yet conjugate system. So what does this mean? First, let's have a look at the definition of the word conjugate. Conjugate. Join together, especially in pairs. Acting or operating as if joined. Having features in common, but opposite or inverse. In other words, although space and counter space are incommensurate in principle, in the magnet, they are acting and operating as if they are joined. Space cannot exist without counter space, and counter space cannot be intuited without space. Both must exist for either to exist. This is the principle of incommensurability. Thus, the principle of incommensurability states the following. Incommensurate domains exist in nature. Incommensurate domains act or operate as if joined. Domain separators exhibit the property of self-similarity. In other words, they are fractal. This last one is new. This is my contribution to Ken Wheeler's Missing Secrets of Magnetism. In the previous video, I talked about how I came to understand the principle of incommensurability and indirectly the concepts of space and counter space via the mathematical fractal called the Mendelbrot set. I will be using this as a teaching tool to help you understand and visualize these concepts. If you read my paper, the Mendelbrot set as a quasi-black hole, which will be linked in the description below, you will find that the black region of the Mendelbrot set are the points whose trajectories contract counterspatially when iterated through the function z equals z squared plus c. The black region of the Mendelbrot set therefore corresponds to the domain of counterspace. The outer gradient region are the points whose trajectories expand spatially, therefore the outer gradient region corresponds to the domain of space. The Mendelbrot set, therefore, can be considered as a graph of the domains of space and counter space. The fuzzy boundary that separates space and counter space can be considered as a domain separator. It separates the domain of space from the domain of counter space. In the model I'm proposing, all domain separators have the property of self-similarity, and therefore, they are fractal in nature. Thus, self-similarity 
is an emergent property of the principle of incommensurability. In the case of the Mendelbrot set, all the pretty Mendelbrot set images that you can find on the internet all come from the region or domain separator. Domain separators are emergent properties of the interaction between space and counter space. The domain of counter space manifests in many ways. Next, I'm going to show you how I plan on unifying physics using the principle of incommensurability. Instead of unifying forces, what we're going to do instead is unify scales. Both space and counter space can appear at many scales. So here is how I plan on unifying physics. Here is the first scale of unification. Dark matter corresponds to the domain of counter space. Dark energy corresponds to the domain of space. Dark matter is counterspatial contraction, and dark energy is spatial expansion. The domain separator of dark matter and dark energy corresponds to the observable universe. The observable universe, therefore, is an emergent property of the interaction between space and counterspace. Now we're going to look at another scale of organized matter, the black hole. Here, the black hole corresponds to the domain of counter space. The not well-known photon sphere corresponds to the domain of space. The black hole can be thought of as counter spatial contraction, and the photon sphere can be thought of as spatial expansion. The domain separator in this case is the event horizon. The event horizon is an emergent property of the interaction between space and counter space. Now we're going to move to the atomic scale. Here, the nucleus of the atom, i.e. the strong force, corresponds to the domain of counter space. The electron shells correspond to the domain of space. And the weak force plays the role of the domain separator. The domain of the weak force in the atom exactly separates space from counter space. As the weak force can bring things together, i.e. fusion, it can also tear things apart, i.e. fission. The poorly named weak force is an emergent property of the interaction between space and counter space. Here I would like to point out that the gradient region, gradient region in the spatial domain of the Mandelbrot set is quantized. The electron shells within the, within the atom are also thought to be quantized. In chaos theory, phase transitions are always quantized, that is, they appear suddenly without warning. The implication here is that the electron transitions are phase transitions, and this is why they are quantized. In other words, photons are not quantized, Electron transitions are quantized within the atom. In short, the atom encapsulates all the features of the principle of incommensurability. That is, it has a counterspatial domain, it has a spatial domain, and it has a domain separator that has interesting behavior. So, here is a summary of my unification based on the principle of incommensurability and the self-similar nature of the universe. In future videos, I will show you more ways to apply the principle of incommensurability to physics, biology, and to nature in general. I will also be talking about the reciprocal nature of space and counter space. Some people out there are trying to say that Ken Wheeler is wrong and that there is no reciprocation within the magnet. Well. The math says otherwise, and therefore, I believe that there is reciprocation between space and counter space. The reciprocation between space and counter space is the cause of energy flow. Yes, I agree that everything is energy flow, but what is the root cause of energy flow? I say the main cause of energy flow is reciprocation between space and counter space. Scientifically speaking, of course. 
please feel free to comment below or ask me any questions. My name is Lori Gardy, and I'm a critical thinker.